For more on the story, we're joined by Professor Lawrence Hamilton Newton, who's a research, uh, who's a Newton research professor rather in political theory at Wits University. Uh, good evening, Prof, and thank you so much for your time. Certainly, when one looks at what is coming out of the alliance partners right now, I'm talking about the SACP, I'm talking about COSATU, there seems to be a view that the president is still very much supported by his alliance partners and none of them at this point really calling for him to resign over this issue. Hi, good evening and good evening to your viewers. Yeah, I think um, this is very much uh, um, an internal ANC matter and uh, I think we've seen um, clearly that uh, the, the, the various forces within the ANC and, and associated with it uh, are rallying behind um, President Ramaphosa. And, um, yeah, I don't think it's that much of a surprise, frankly. Um, we don't really, we haven't really been given any detail as to what may or may not have occurred on the farm. Um, and Parliament was correctly given the means to at least give a prima facie uh, appraisal, but that's that's as far as we've got. And from there, given the given the situation, given the proximity to the December conference, it very quickly becomes a, a political matter. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that what you're seeing is the strong work that Sir Ramaphosa has done to get a great deal of the party and the alliance members on side over the last year, at least, um, working in his favour. Although, of course, Thursday night felt like a different world. Professor Hamilton, is it not what the ANC wants us to believe? That this matter on the president is an ANC matter, that is, it is political party factionalism at play and therefore must be treated as such, when in fact it is not about the ANC, at least not solely. It is about the president of South Africa and the extent to which he may have violated the law. And we as South Africans also deserve to have answers beyond what is happening in the ANC. Well, of course. I mean, but I think it's very important to separate out two things. The one thing is the process of coming to a determination of, of what exactly occurred and what effects that would have on someone like a, a president. And then the matter of there being two very, very firmly divided factions within the ANC. So I'm not sure it's the ANC's intention, even if you could think there would be such a single entity as the ANC to have an intention at all. But I'm not sure it's the ANC's desire for us to see its deep-rooted factionalism come to the surface again. If anything, the timing of this, if we lay to one side the facts of the matter, right, which we are still yet to determine. But the timing of the revelation and the timing of the, of, of the various uh, events that followed are definitely politically significant. And they have been generated by the, the opposition, oppositional faction within the ANC. So it is most definitely an internal ANC battle. But of course, your normative point, your ethical point, your moral point is extremely important. But we shouldn't, as Demo democratic South Africans, have um, our interests laid before this sort of internal faction. Or rather, we shouldn't have the, the factionalism of the ANC uh, keep coming to the fore at the expense of the ANC being able to um, lead and govern in our interest. I'm listening to what you, you, you're saying, Professor Hamilton, and I'm trying to reconcile myself. And, and, and the reason why I'm staying with this point is that it's how it has also been positioned by various members, senior members of the ANC, depending on which side of the coin they fall on, that this is 
merely something that is factional, should be interpreted through that lens and therefore resolved through the, that lens. So it gives the ultimate power to the ANC to decide what happens with the president. But the reality is that as a head of state, the president is not only accountable to the ANC as his party, he's also accountable to Parliament and all of the other institutions that have been tasked with investigating this matter. So does it, that mean, does it then mean that simply because there is a case to be made for why these allegations came to the fore in the first place that are around factionalism, that there must be then sort of a, a toned down response to how we view the, the, the issue of accountability around President Ramaphosa, where this matter is concerned. Because as things stand, we still don't know what happened on Palapala in as, much, in as far as how much money exactly the president ha has had on the farm, why he had that money, was it declared, and was there any contravention of the current country's foreign exchange control laws? And I suggest to you that it may be a long time until we do. But um, let's be clear. Uh, your point about accountability is extremely important. But there's one very important important silver lining here, and that is that Parliament has actually acted in a manner that does hold the President to account, or at least begin the process of holding the President to account in a way that we haven't seen before. Um, we definitely didn't see in the Zuma period. The, the Section 89 panel was generated by Parliament. Parliament is our body. They're our representatives. Them holding our president to account on the basis of this report is, in effect, us holding him to account. We cannot, as ordinary citizens, hold him to account in any other way besides taking up some kind of legal battle. But... This, that step, the production of the report, is the first step in a process of holding him to account and hopefully eventually uh, revealing the truth and, 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 and getting the consequences or, or enabling the consequences that follow. Um, that parliament is so dominated by the ANC and that the... The, that section of the ANC that is currently strongly in support of Ramaphosa is in the majority, is, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a typical political matter, frankly, um, and it is partly a consequence of the way in which we uh, elect our president through the parliament, um, which, which, which generates a kind of um, a, a double layer of, of accountability away from us. But um, it's not all doom and gloom in the way that you seem to be expressing, because there has been a process through the main structure of holding our representatives, and in particular the, in particular the, rep, the executive branch of our representatives, to account by the legislative branch. A process that got underway under duress and incredible pressure as a result of what we saw members of opposition parties do. And at the same time, we have also heard from some ANC leaders about how tomorrow um, their MPs will effectively vote against um, the recommendations of, of this panel. Now, is that the spirit of how parliamentarians are supposed to be doing their jobs? Unfortunately, um, whatever the system is, there is a tendency for parliamentarians to be whipped, as they say in the English system, by their, their, by their, um, their leaders. Um, and if there is a capacity to do that, then they will do that. And, and that's effectively what's going on. The NWC and the NEC are, have, have effectively over the last few days come to a, a sort of consensus type agreement and they will whip Parliament to ensure that the ANC either, uh, the ANC members either abstain or, or vote against this. Um, and so it's unlikely to have 
um, there is, it's unlikely to be successful. Um, but that's partly just a, a consequence of the way in which parliamentary democracy functions. It just, just so happens that the dominant party in our parliament is the ANC, and it is, despite these deep factions, it is relatively well uh, controlled by a leadership that is now coherently around Cyril Ramaphosa. All right. Professor Lawrence Hamilton is a, a Newton Research Professor in Political Theory at Wits and Cambridge. Thanks for your time tonight.